Hi everyone, it's Braylon and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a special ed teacher. I teach first grade through third grade right now, but I feel like every year the grade levels kind of change a little bit. And on this channel, I mostly post a lot of vlogs or specifically things that I'm doing in my classroom or things that I'm creating in my classroom. And it's fun. It's just fun to document it all. And I never claim to be a specialist or an expert on anything. I'm really just kind of bringing you along as I make stuff. And today I thought I would make some adapted books. We're going to make some interactive readers today for very little money. I don't want to say free. If you already have all of the materials, then it is free, but we won't be purchasing any specific teaching products. And the reason this is so important to me is because I have a lot of students where they're working on comprehension, they're working on, you know, basic elements of a story, and I want them to feel like they've accomplished something, and I want to be able to have a book for them. But going on Teachers Pay Teachers every single week and scrolling through the adapted or interactive books is overwhelming because it can easily take all of your money. So I want to make them for way less money, and I thought, why not film a video about it? I want to show you some options on how you can store this book. I do like the look of a bound book. At my school, we do have a binding machine, so I'm using this for my students and uh, for some assessment type things, so I'm probably going to bind these at school. I'll put a picture right here of what it looks like when it's bound looks very good. But again, I do not think that people have to bind everything. It's not worth it if you don't have a binding machine. It, it, I just wouldn't spend the money on something like that. There are many, many options. I would say that the number one option, I think, is a binder. Fill up an entire um, binder either with these sheets or you can laminate them and put them in a binder and then you can assign this to a student. They could go through one story, two story, a bunch of stories. And if you have an extra binder laying around, which most people do, and some laminating sheets, then you're good to go. If you are not interested in something like that, here are some even cheaper versions. Um, this is a file folder, really simple. And these little, what are these called? Brads or something. Um, so I took the file folder, I put the brads in, and like the three hole punch and then I put them inside. I put a simple book inside. This has um, sheet protectors but you could do it without sheet protectors and just a simple folder and these three and you're good to go. So that's another option. Um, I found this folder. I brought this from my classroom just to show you. Um, I found this folder at the dollar store. Um, it's a folder like this but it has a pouch on the front and they're still at the dollar store if you go check it depends on where you live um but these are awesome so you staple the story together or you know put a binder ring or something and then you put it into the folder and then you put the pieces in this little pouch part why not um my favorite option if i'm not going to bind something is to find a folder which they also sell these at the dollar store that have these inside so you can attach like three hole punch and attach to the back. That is my favorite. And they have a bunch of different options. I found these at Target, I think for a dollar or staples, Target or staples. And you can fit a bunch in here. And um, yeah, it's a great way to keep all of your books. So I wanted to show some of those options. What I'm going to do is I'm going to laminate my books um, and then I'm going to put them in a binder. I think that's just the easiest one. I'm gonna put it in a binder. Um, actually, yeah, a binder or one of these because it's kind of the same thing. Um, and then I'm going to save one and at school I'm gonna bind it in the actual binding machine tomorrow. But just for the sake of the video, I'll show you the cheaper alternative. All right, so the website that I use is clarkness.com. I really like this website because it has a lot of simple readers. Um, some of it kind of goes along with certain curriculums, but for the most part, 
part they have everything and they have dyslexic fonts um, and so there are so so many options uh, different simple ones and um, a little bit more complex stories for this I really like to look here at the leveled readers um, for a lot of my students this is kind of the level that they're at so the one that I chose is this simple one and it has about 10 pages and each page has a different like simple theme so you know I see a uh, baseball or I see an an airplane. So another thing that I like to use is Teachers Pay Teachers, which everybody kind of knows Teachers Pay Teachers. I like to look for simple readers and then go down and click free so that I'm always like um, obviously not paying for things. <laughs> so here there are so many options of free simple readers um, and the one that I chose I believe is like Arctic animals or something and I really liked this one because it was very simple. You could do full page or you could do half page options and again it's just the simple one where I could find simple symbols and be able to match them. All right, so after I take a look at the stories that I want, find the free readers, I am going to create the pieces that go along with it. Now, some schools have um, subscriptions to Boardmaker. I would say go ahead and use that. If you don't know who has Boardmaker at your school, ask the speech pathologist, ask the occupational therapist, the reading specialist, or the, you know, English as a second language teacher if you have one of those. Usually those are the people who have access to Boardmaker or another special ed teacher. If you don't have Boardmaker, um, there's an online version. I use a website called Smarty Symbols. Um, you, it's kind of very similar to Boardmaker. It costs, I think, like $5.99 a month if you're just using it for you, not to create products. Um, and it works very similar. It just has a bunch of different symbols and pieces. And um, yeah, it's awesome. So I like to use Smarty Symbols, like I said, and over here I pick a template. It works very, very similarly on um, Board Maker or any of the other symbol sticks or anything like that. So I pick the template and then I search for the symbol that will best work. So I'm going back to the story and the first uh, picture is an airplane. So I'm simply just going to search for airplane here and then I'm going to drag that to my um, template and I'm going to do that for all the other symbols. The other option that I found was just simply PowerPoint, you know, making like a table. Oops, I messed that table up. Sorry. Making a table and then um, searching on Google Images for an image. And then the last option is to use um, Google Slides, which I think is actually a really good option because again, you can search right there in Google Slides, find the little image or picture that works, resize it, and then use that as your symbol. All right, normally I have a full setup where I take out all my gear and put the camera like this and whatever, but you know what, it's at night and this is more of like an impromptu video. So you're getting this angle, not the special angle. And I apologize, my second camera is sitting right over there and I'm not gonna use it, so deal with it. I love this laminator, the Scotch one. If you're a graduate or something and you're looking for a laminator, this one is great. I also recommend either this one or the one that's in the bigger size so you can make file folders. I have my Arctic book and I also have my airplane book. I printed them very, very plainly. Um, not even in color. <laughs> and then I have my symbols. I have my Arctic symbol. So each page, I just printed a very simple picture that goes along with each page. So a lot of times when you have adapted books, there's a place on the page for like as a marker to know where to put the piece. You could use a Sharpie and you could draw a square if that's what you want. You could put a giant dot, whatever, to indicate that that's where they should place their piece. Something that I like to do is I like to cut out little pieces of paper um, that's a different color and then put that square onto the page. One of the tips I have is when you're making a book is try to line up the pages in the laminating sheets so that everything kind of matches. I'm not super OCD, but it is something that I think just generally like looks more aesthetically pleasing especially if you're gonna have this in your classroom for like four or five years. 
All right, as I set these laminating sheets up, I do want to say, I know that not everybody has laminators or has these laminating sheets. I totally get that. A pack of laminating sheets, uh, a pack of like 50 is maybe $8. Um, I always try to keep them on hand, especially like as a special ed teacher, because it it's worth it. Um, but again, I don't want people to feel like they have them. If your school will give you some sort of budget, I would say add laminating sheets to that budget. Or if your school has a really big laminator, then don't even waste your money and go laminate in the big laminator. I used to do that all the time at my old school. We had the big, like the really big one. Oh, it was so good. Um, so yeah, that's something that I think is like really, really important. The other thing I want to talk about is Velcro. Um, that is also like a little bit pricey, but if you make the $10 investment of Velcro, then you'll have tons of Velcro dots for a long time. I prefer the dots so I don't have to cut anything, um, but it does also depend on you as a person. You can buy the really big rolls of Velcro. Um, and that'll work great but you don't have to the other option is this tacky tacky glue i'm going to put a picture of it right here and i'm also going to link it down below i saw some of my friends on instagram talk about it where it stays tacky for a long time and then you don't even have to use velcro you could just keep attaching again and again and again and that's super helpful so um, it's totally up to you if you want to use Velcro for this or if you want to use the tacky glue for this. I would say if you are looking at me right now, like I don't have any of this makeup $10, $20 investment on a lot of these things and they'll really help you in the long run. All right, so I finished laminating everything. Um, I just cut out the pieces. I also laminated a little piece of green paper so that I can put Velcro on here and it can house all of my pieces. Um, if you're using a binder, this could just be loose in the front pocket of the binder. If you're making an actual book, it can be loose as well and, and just kind of hang out to the side when you start reading the book. It just kind of depends on what you want. All right, you're kind of precarious, but like, oh well. So as I put this stuff into the binder, I... Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, well, you fell. This is why, yes, that is my Christmas tree. It will be up all year. Just come at me so that's why I said you were precarious because you fell so I'm going to use velcro these are the velcro dots that I have I always put hard velcro on the pieces and soft velcro on the book um, so I'm going to do that right now great so um, here's kind of what it looks like just a little dot so I'm going to put a dot in the middle of each of those blue squares and then we'll be going. All right, so here we are. We have our airplane, the first part of our story. We have all of our pieces right here, and we are ready to go. So let me, let me move this over. So what I would normally do is start at the beginning. I see one airplane, and they would look over here. I might actually take some off, lay them out so that they would be able to see. So I might actually get the right answer and the cat, and I would give them two choices. After we read the passage, what do you see? And they could match to the airplane. So I hope that was helpful for some people. Again, um, I do like it when it's in a binder because it's a little bit more durable, but I also really like it when it's in a binding of some sort because it just looks more aesthetically pleasing, and when it comes to storing them, it takes up a little bit less space. But again, it depends on what you want. Um, really quickly, I wanted to show you, I printed off that other free one, the Arctic one, and I just put it in one like this. So with just simple sheet protect, um, I might, I haven't decided yet what I want to do with this. I could take the Velcro and we could stick it on. This is this book is meant to be cut in half. I don't even care because I don't want it to be cut in half because I wanted it to fit a full page. Um, or I could use that, that like tacky stuff and have them just answer really simply. Um, but yeah, it's right here. It's easy. And um, we're also probably going to use this next week in our science unit. I hope that was helpful. I hope that there was something in this video that um, maybe you could implement or you 
could use um, or if you have other suggestions for how to make things like this please um, leave them down below in the comments so that other people can see them I can pin comments that I think are most helpful and those will be right at the top for everybody to see um, I'm really excited about this it is actually gonna help me next week for some of my classes and so uh, I think it will be really awesome um, my plan for this summer honestly is to make a bunch of these and to get really into it and make sure I have a bunch of them and they don't cost much money because the books are free or if I find other PDFs on the internet you can always find PDFs of books print those off and make one like this and I yeah it's been really really awesome I hope you enjoyed this video and yeah I'll see you in the next one bye